I read something interesting the other day. They were talking about um, Jonathan Majors and the fact that Phase 5 and Phase, phase 6 were not supposed to be um, built around him at first. Mm -hmm. So that was not their original plan. But he seemed to get himself into some legal trouble recently. We don't know what happened because he wasn't charged for anything. Right. If you're Marvel, Adrian, what would you do in this situation? Would you proceed with, you know, Jonathan Majors as Kang? Would you um, keep everything the way, you know, it's planned to be? Would you scale his role back or would you recast him completely? <laughs> Welcome to Only Comics. We are on it's episode five, Adrian. Episode five, five. Moving along. Yes, we are. We got we got some fun stuff today. Um, and you know, I, I was talking actually to my my daughter the other day. I'm like, man, there's a lot of movies coming out that we're gonna have to go see. Like, cause we go see all these, you know, all the comic movies, and it's like we got, you know, Spider Man coming out pretty soon. We got the Flash movie. Then you got the Marvels. It's just stuff like from now till the end of next year. So, a couple of things that um about these recent movies. I, I read something interesting the other day. They were talking about um, Jonathan Majors and the fact that Phase 5 and Phase, phase 6 were not supposed to be um, built around him at first. Mm -hmm. So that was not their original plan. I don't know if you saw that or not. I did. I, I read a couple of things about it. Um, I, I think the performance that he gave in a couple of maybe a show and um, maybe the Ant-Man, which I still haven't seen in yep. one Manium, I, um, they, they were impressed. Yep. So they kind of, you know, geared everything around him. So Absolutely. Yes, exactly. It was um, it was Loki. You remember he played He Who Remains yep. at the end of Loki. And that that was a Kang variant. And, and I mean, he did great performance. Okay. I, I never, I didn't, I've never heard of Jonathan Majors. I didn't hear to him, um, hear about him prior to that show. I, did you? Well, I, I saw him on Love and Country. Of course, he was like half the size he is now. Okay. But um, I, I actually liked that show. Up until the end, I didn't see him again until I saw the uh, Creed three previews. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'd never even heard of the dude. I saw him in, in um, Loki, and I was like, wow. I was interested in the character at uh -huh. that point, right? And then, yeah, you mentioned um, Ant-Man Quantumania, which is on Disney Plus now. I've not rewatched which, which it. I, which I still haven't seen yet, but, <laughs> I mean, I, I'll get that maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been, it's been one of the things in the back of my mind, like, I'll rewatch it at some point, but then, Adrian, I think about watching it, and I'm like, it wasn't really a pleasant experience the first couple times, so may, may, I, don't, I think it's still too soon, so I'll, I'll let that be. But I guess when they, they started receiving the dailies from that, that movie, um, when they were shooting it, the, the studio was so impressed that that's when they started switching right. some stuff around. And, you know, what's, what's, I guess, not funny, but he seemed to get himself into some legal trouble recently. Um, and, I you know... And we only talk about comics here. This is a comic thing because it will affect the way the stories are, are played out right. over the next few years. Because they, you know, once they saw his performance, they plan. I mean, there's an Avengers movie in the works called Kang Dynasty, which wow. is built all around his character. So, and, you know, the fact that there's all these different variants makes you believe that they're probably going to show up in multiple different, you know, movies and series. Um, was one part that, you know, at, at the end of, 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 there was an end credit scene where, um, at the end of Ant-Man, where you see just thousands of King, you know, variants just right. ready to go. So, um, I, you know, what, what what happened, or here's the thing, we don't know what happened because he wasn't charged for anything. Right. And it, I think it puts a studio in a really tough spot. Like, I guess it, if you're Marvel, Adrian, what would you do in this situation? Would you proceed with, you know, Jonathan Majors as Kang? Would you um, keep everything the way, it, you know, it's planned to be? Would you scale his role back or would you recast him completely? I would proceed cautiously, number one. Um, however, I would still proceed. Yeah. Um, they were obviously impressed enough with his performances in, uh, what was it, Loki yeah. and um, Quantumania that um, they built – um, this, uh, this ecosystem around him. And now, um, you know, he got in a little trouble. Well, I don't know how little it is or if it's in any trouble at all. But from what I understand, whenever you call the cops and it's a domestic thing, the fir they are going to arrest somebody. Exactly. Um, typically the man, um, which is what appears to have happened here. Now, 
if this guy was the monster that everybody's trying to make him out to be, I mean, she'd have more than some a little cut behind her ear. I mean, she could have got that previously. Um, they could have got in some kind of scuffle or whatever. But, I mean, my point is that she would have some obvious abuse um, signs on her body uh, as big as this dude is, yeah. right? So, uh, I but I would continue on, but with their deep pockets, I would also kind of get some inside information too to kind of yeah. help gauge or guide my continued production. Got it. So for you, it'd be really contingent upon what what actually happened because we don't Correct. know. We, right Correct. now, like you said, the cop showed up, domestic, they're taking somebody, and then there was even some text messages released from um, the girl to Jonathan basically mm -hmm. saying, like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I told them we just got into a, a little, I don't remember the exact words, but, I, you know, I should have never tried to grab your phone. Like, so th something was happening between them. Right. Now, she made these claims, or I'm sorry, he got arrested, and then she then proceeded not to press charges, so he's never charged. Right. So in the studio, it's kind of like, do you, now there were some of, I think, some agents or some other sponsors that did drop him, but Marvel's right. yet to even, you know, um, say anything. They, they didn't even comment on this. Correct. Correct. Um, I, I didn't see all the tech. And I was doing a little research on this before today, and a lot of people are making comments about this. So I don't want to get do too much of a deep dive mm -hmm. um, only because I'm just, I'm only outside again. I never knew the guy. Right. And the people are being interviewed. They don't know him either. I mean, um, there was one blog I was looking at. They're trying to, t this guy is interviewing other actors, yeah. other black male actors. And the first thing that he tries to do, I mean, from what I see is bait them. What mm -hmm. he'll say is, well, Jonathan Major is like the top actor. So it's kind of like trying to piss them off so they yeah. say something derogatory about it. I got you. So it just seems to be all this stuff. And then all the clickbait. Oh, Jonathan Major drop question mark. Right. You know, Disney question mark. So I don't want to do too much of a deep dive because, again, the guy hasn't been charged. Yeah. Um, I do know um, that w during the, with a domestic, the first they go, they are going to arrest somebody. Yeah. If if it's not the male, it's going to be both, and they'll figure it out in court. Um, but with the text messages, um, she seems to be. Well, you know, I'm I'm sorry I put you in this in this position. I told him I was, you know, w pretty much what happened. But the district attorney for New York is pursuing the ch pursuing him regardless, yeah. which I find amazing. So there's this whole thing around right. it. Again, it's don't messy. know what happened, but we'll see. Yeah, no, it's just it's messy. And my my bigger thing is like the studios don't say anything. Like, right. you know, even like and it, it, what's funny is it's not just Marvel right now with some controversy. You have DC, right. the whole Ezra Miller deal, and it's like that is something. I mean, we're with Jonathan Majors. We're talking one charge that was well he wasn't really charged you know right. he was arrested not charged Ezra Miller we're talking there's a laundry list of stuff I mean Correct. from assault from kidnapping from uh, all, all kinds of stuff breaking and entering yep. um, um I think there was like some unlawful uh, detainment he held somebody in so in a house yep. and I mean just relationship you know, with a minor all kinds, all of, kinds stuff. of stuff yeah and it's like he, now DC I I what I believe they're doing I believe that they're getting rid of him without making a statement about it because right. I, I'll bet right here on Only Comics mm -hmm. that this is the last time we'll see Ezra Miller playing the Flash in this upcoming Flash movie. I hope so. Yeah, because it, it's it's dirty. It's there's a, it's messy. Right. There's all this stuff, right. and and again, my bigger thing is I believe as a studio you should come out and make a statement about it. They're proceeding like it. They don't even know it happened. Well, um, they don't know what happened, so they're not – I mean, I probably wouldn't make a statement at yeah. this point. However, other people have. You know, like I said, they, um, his management company dropped him. His marketing yep. company dropped him. Um, the Army, I guess, had a commercial with him coming out. This guy had a lot of stuff in the works. Yeah. Um, but it's unfortunate that, um, for the most part, um, people are guilty until proven innocent instead yep. of the other way around. Um, and then there's, you know, s the social court. Right. Um, they see some little thing and it's like, oh, just just fry him yeah. first. And then there is no redemption right. because there I mean, I, I can I'm telling you if something if something if he gets um, cleared of everything, then there's not going to be as much hype 
you know, with people re-accepting him right. as it is, you know, destroying this guy's career. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really, it's an unfair, uh, I guess, level I think they're held to as a celebrity, right? Because, hey, if, right. if listen, if you work a job at, at Walmart and you had a situation at home and no one was ever charged, dude, you're back to work like nothing happened. Right. But you're right here. We have this whole social court. But, yeah, I mean, I... I, I agree. I think I would – I don't think I would recast him. I, I don't think I would um, get rid of him or anything like that. I, I would probably maybe revisit the plans for the next few phases if I'm Marvel. Right. I may not make him the center uh, of everything. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's early enough to where – like now would be the time to do it. We don't right. know a whole lot about what's coming. It'd be like, could you imagine them trying to recast – um, Josh Brolin, like after Infinity War, <laughs> right. that'd have been messy. Right. But they recasted the Thanos, if you remember, there for no, you know, no, nothing um, along the lines of what happened in here. But the first time we saw Thanos at the end of the Avengers movie was a different actor. I forget right. his name. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're so early in this where they could if they needed to. But I, I think I, I would just to your point, kind of you know, approach this with caution. Mm -hmm. But maybe tailor the um, the story a little bit. Maybe move away from him being the centerpiece, just because you know that there's potential. But anyway, um, across the Spider Verse, across the Spider Verse, June second. So that's next week. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm I guess I'll go see. I'm going to see it next weekend. So I'm assuming we're going to do our review here next week. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go and see it. Um, well, next weekend is going to be busy, but I'll squeeze it in. See yep. what we can do. So we'll we'll get it. We'll get a review at that next week, next Sunday, next Monday when we drop. Um, so that drops June second. I, I read an interesting article the other day about the Venom, the Venom verse, I guess as they call it, the Tom Hardy Venom may be featured in Across the Spider Verse. Um, I just don't care about the <laughs> Venom character. So if he shows up yeah. in this as a cameo, that's fine. Um, and I guess he showed up at the in the end trailers of No Way Home. Yes, um, yep. and and I, I think a lot of this stuff is based off of some Korean advertisement. Okay. Um, I I don't know the details again. I don't want to go yeah. into it because I don't know the details. But I he's just not a strong character to me. Yeah. Um. So I have zero interest whether or not he shows up in Spider Verse. Let me or clarify because last time you said that well, somebody misinterpreted you. <laughs> when you say Venom's not a strong character, do you mean the comic character? Or do you mean what we've seen with these two movies? I mean to me. To you. It's not okay. that it's not that he's not a strong character. He is a powerful character in the um, you know Marvel universe. Yep. It's just that he's like um, you know like a a side character to me. In, in the words, I I've never really followed him. Okay, so, so he's not a big deal to you at all. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's the words I'm looking. Okay. He's not a big deal to me. Now, did you've seen the the Venom movies with Tom Hardy? I think I've seen one. Yeah. Um, the, the first one, it was entertaining, but not enough for me to follow the character. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm torn. Like, I saw the first one, and I thought, this is cool. But the whole time, I'm like, but where's Spider-Man? Right. Like, it's it'd be like, I mean, all right, well, I guess we had a Joker movie without Batman. But it, it's to that point. It'd be like a Robin movie, and there's no Batman mentioned at all, you know? Well, I mean, Robin could probably pull like a mini series, but it, it would be more like the Goblin, a Goblin movie without Spider Man. Yeah. I would think. There you go, good analogy. Yeah, no mention of it. And but that's so to me that was odd the whole time because I only know Venom from Spider Man comics. Right. right. You know. Now, are you were you a fan of Tom Hardy's portrayal? Never saw Tom Hardy before Venom at all. Really? Nope. Got it. Now, how do you think he did as far as portraying that character? Um. I, I'm not sure what Venom is supposed to be. He seems to be this, like, malicious alien entity. Yeah. Um, again, the fact that they're trying to make everything funny, mm -hmm. um, that kind of threw me off a little bit. Uh, maybe if he was just more raw, more vicious, yeah. more in tune with the, the character himself, um, that would have made the movie more entertaining. So I don't have a basis because I try to see how people fit into the role of the character they're playing, yeah. and I'm not really familiar enough with, Harding or the Venom character to say, well, he did a good job in that role. I just think that considering Venom, Venom's character, they try to make it too much of a comedy. Yeah. No, I, I he, he, Venom in the character is a savage. He yeah. is, he's a villain straight up. He's no anti-hero, you right. know. Um, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, there's some, t you know, with any character, sometimes where they cross over a little bit, but he's not known to be that anti-hero. And that's what they use them, you know, try to make them out to be in this movie. So to me, that was odd. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't know, you know, Venom as well as I know characters like Wolverine, Batman, mm. like that. But I, I've seen enough of Venom in Spider-Man to know that 
that portrayal to me was not Venom. It was way too funny. Mm-hmm. I don't remember Venom being that funny in the comics. I really don't. I remember Spider Man being funny. That makes sense. Right. But I and it was just it seemed like the same thing that The Rock tried to do with the Black Adam movie. It's take this character who's known for being a villain and let's turn him into a hero. Right. For the audience because he's known as a cool character. Well, did The Rock try to turn um Black Adam into a anti-hero because of the audience or because he didn't want to play mm. a evil person. Yeah. I there's rumors that it's the second one. Ah. And I I, 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 the only reason why I believe that rumor is because he did turn down a cameo in the Shazam movie. And uh-huh. as, you know, he's Shazam and that Black Adam are, you know, they go against the other comics all the time. Absolutely. Like, that's his essential villain right there. So, he's, absolutely. The fact that he did that, I think it is the, the latter of the two. Hey, it's like, you know, um, what is that guy that played for the Patriots, uh, the quarterback? Uh, Tom Brady. Yeah, him. If you don't want to get hit, Stay out the game. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to play a villain, then don't accept the job. Yep. So, and now with the Venom, I don't know. I doubt that was Tom Hardy. I think that was just more the studio trying to capitalize on a cool character. Because Venom, it it is like, you know, the Joker where he's that villain that everyone did like. Uh Uh-huh. But I just, I don't think, like, I wouldn't want to see a Joker movie where Joker's the hero. That'd be strange. Absolutely. Or like you mentioned, the Green Goblin. Imagine Green Goblin saving the day. (laughs) Like, it would... Wouldn't make any sense at all. No. or Nor could he be in a movie by himself. Right. So that's what they tried with Venom. So I'm, I, I don't know how excited I am to see that Venom in this Across the Spider-Verse. And I just think something that we talked about a couple weeks ago, it, I'm nervous that this movie is going to have way too much going on in it. Absolutely. Um, I, what they say, there was going to be like 200-something plus versions of Spider-Man. Yeah. In this, I mean, that's enough as it is. Right. Then they're going to probably throw try to throw in some some comedy time. Yep. Um, they're going to have to build some kind of relationship. It looks like the major, uh, I guess, um, um, evil person in this is a version of the Spider-Man yep. from the commercials. Yeah. Um, so with all of that stuff going on, I don't see how they can throw a venom in there as something other than, you know, maybe he's just walking down the street eating some ice cream or something. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do wonder if a lot of these, you know, like you, the 200 or whatever versions of Spider-Man, are, are these going to be just real one-off cameo appearances? Like like if you remember um, Doctor Strange, Multiverse, yeah. when, they're go, when they go through like, I don't know what it is, six or seven or eight different um, universes. Right. Now, to, to know that beforehand or, or see that in trail, you think, oh, God, this movie, they're going to be all over the place. Yep. But they went through them like this, and then we got right. to you right. know the, the couple where they spent most of the time. So I'm wondering if the Spider-Men will be treated like that, where there's a couple scenes where we get to see all, you know, a bunch of them. But I hope it's not the whole movie where there's, like, hundreds of Spider-Mans everywhere. Well, I don't think they'll, they'll have time to go through 214 <laughs> versions of Spider-Man. But I did see um, a commercial where they had – maybe an Indian version of a Spider-Man. Yeah. And they tried to make that a funny scene. And then there was something with a cat that was trying to be funny. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, you know, if you're going to do it, make a good story, not try to make it a comedian side thing. Yeah. I also read that um, there's going to, the Spider-Man from the video game is going to be in here as well. So there's a, there's a PlayStation video game. I mean, I played both of them as Spider-Man, Miles 1. They're great. But that character is somehow going to be in here as well. It's just funny the extent of, of what they're going. In. And now there's been rumors about uh, one of these live action Spider Man also being in there, like the Tom Holland, the um, you know Andrew Garfield, or, or Tobey Maguire. Now I've just seen some you know light rumors about that, but that'd be interesting if they were to bring one of those in. Did they say anything about a Lego Spider Man? Yes. Yep. Okay. Ridiculousness. <laughs> they did say a Lego Spider-Man. <laughs> so this, this may, now I'm still excited for the movie, just I guess based off of the first one and what some of the feedback we've heard so far, like, you know, we mentioned um, last week where the um, Marvel actually came out or, or some of the directors or producers from the movie came out and said that this is their, their empire strikes back. So um, it is interesting to see. There's a lot of hype behind this. I, I'm also interested in it. Um, 
despite that it may seem confusing, um, again, like you said, with, um, you know, Dr. Strange, they showed all these universes and stuff, but they went through it pretty quickly. So I have high hopes that, you know, even though there's, uh, you know, all these different Spider-Mans, that it'll make sense, and I hope it makes sense. So yeah. I'm, I'm also look, very much looking forward to, um, you know, this next movie. I got you. Of the Spider-Man variants you know, do you have a favorite? Um... I would say the number one only because it's more recent is the Miles Morales yeah. one. Um, the cultural, um, you know, how everything, the, the, the fact that it's a fresh look, um, how they, uh, besides they didn't, you know, respin the, the whole Uncle Ben yeah. story again. Um, so it was a fresh take on it after all these years. So that's that's number one for me. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I would go, mine's the original. I, I love Peter Parker. I love that. Um, and I think Miles would be a close second. I do think that was done very well. Yep. I think there's a lot of times where they, you know, want to recast or, because they even do a, com not, not recast like there's no character, no actor behind it, but change up a character. And a lot of times they, they do it wrong, I believe. I, I don't, I'm, I'm usually not a fan of it, but mm -hmm. what they did with Miles, the presentation, I love that. And I love that it's like he's similar enough to Peter Parker and Spider Man but also different enough to where you can enjoy both stories. I like the Peter Par Parker character too. Um, I like, so I'm old enough to know about the 70s yeah. Spider-Man. So I actually like that because it was new. Um, it was, I mean, and there wasn't like a, a, a plethora of, you know, comic book character movies out at yeah. the time. At the time you had probably the Incredible Hulk. You had, there was even an old Thor movie Wow, uh, him walking around I with seen some with movie. uh with boots, <laughs> yeah, you know, with fur fur lined boots or something, and um there was Spider Man and even the older Batman and older Superman. So I've seen all the older stuff. Yeah, but it just seems like after um like the first reintroduction of Spider Man, then they started. It's like every time they came out, it was a new character. A you know the the webs came out a different part of the body. And but they always respawn the Uncle Ben thing. Yeah, it it, it got kind of old at a point. Yeah, um. Now we in this Spider Verse, we've never seen the Uncle Ben story, so which is a good thing because right. I to your point, we've seen it way too much. I mean, right. we've seen it so many times in movies, so many times in comics, and in this one, we've not seen it yet, and I hope we never do. And I don't think we will because it's an older Peter Parker we're dealing with. Right. Well, the other the other thing with the Miles Morales story is that I I hope they don't keep recasting him i yeah. mean it's it's a it's a kind of a cartoon it's kind of a drawing yeah um so he can i like the fact that they aged him yes since the I first like one that, yeah. um so because they are drawing him there's no replacement for the actor that's playing miles morales right, right right but i hope they don't keep you know with future movies keep uh recasting his how he became spider-man Hey, listen, if you want to find out how Miles Morales became Spider-Man, go back to the very first one. Right, right. You got a, a perfect reference there. Yeah. Now, it would be interesting to see if we do get to see a Miles Morales version in the MCU. There there was, there's a small Easter egg, I think, in the first Spider-Man, Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh -huh. If you remember, um, the, the you know, the Vulture and his whole crew, they were taking up, they were finding these um, remnants from the Avengers first movie when they battle, you know, the Chari or whatnot. Right. So they're taking these weapons and selling them. Right. And there's a scene where they're selling them to, um, it's actually Childish Gambino, the rapper who plays um, the, the role, and his name his name is Aaron, which is Miles' uncle's name. Uh. And Spider-Man shows up, and I think he, he stops the sale of the weapon or whatnot, and he, he, um, he shoots a web at this dude, and he kind of gets like caught up in his car trunk or whatever. Yep. And he's, he's talking to him, and... They, they, they share some dialogue about Harlem, and that character mentions that he has a nephew in Harlem. Ah. So there was a slight tease there. So I wonder if, you know, with this whole reset with Spider-Man, I'd be open to it. Now, in the comics, I think when they first introduced Miles, he was in his own universe. He never met Peter Parker. I, I believe this uh, this Spider-Verse movie, well, was the first time we've seen in a movie where they, those two crossed paths, right? Correct. So with this multiverse that we already have in the MCU, it would be pretty cool to see a Miles Morales version in this next trilogy. How do you think they present it? Would would you you think they'd have like a animated Avatar version pop up into a real life, mm -hmm. or do you think they get a real actor to portray Miles I, Morales? I think real actor. Yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't see, and actually I hope they don't do this. 
Um, I hope they don't bring animated versions into the MCU. I mean, who knows? To your point, everything has to be funny and a joke. So, right. But I hope they don't go that crazy. Okay. You know, the old days of the Roger Rabbit movies and <laughs> shit like that. Like, I don't want to see that in Marvel. Please don't go that route. Right, right. <laughs> but I, I would like to see him kind of, and there's plenty of, you know, young actors where, where we could uh, we could see that. Because he's younger than Peter Parker. Right. But right. yeah. Well, he's he's definitely, Um, I mean, he's like, what, still in high school. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, Peter Parker started out in high school, True. too, right? True. Right? So, but I mean, now he's a little aged, a little yeah. so on and so forth. So, it'll be interesting to see. I do like the fact that with Tom Holland, he actually, when they when he first started, he looked like a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the, when Spider-Man came out, the original, Tobey Maguire's, that was 2001. That was back when, you know, Hollywood had this, they had, for some reason, they'd make all these rom-coms in like high school age. Mm -hmm. But ev all the high schoolers would be like 25, 30 years old. Right. Like that. You, you remember, you know, the movie Grease. Yes. You know, they're supposed to be in high school. Yes. <laughs> and yes. A lot of the actors are like 35 years old. Right. Right. <laughs> yep. So I, I did like that about Tom Holland. Um, all right. So last week we uh, were talking about um, some X-Men stuff and yep. we, we brought up the idea of ranking in our X-Men movies. Yep. So. I have my rankings, um, and there's and, and the way we the way we looked at this was all the mainstream X Men movies from Fox from both um, both eras, I guess, right? The early mm -hmm. ones with the Patrick Stewart um, right. Professor X, the later ones with James McAvoy. We also added in Deadpool movies and Wolverine movies right. because those they are considered by Marvel part of that X Men universe. Correct. Um, so there's twelve of them total. And I think we just go 12 through one, you know, we'll, we'll go back and forth. Let's start us off and add some, some comments on some of them. Now, did you watch any of these over the weekend or any reviews or anything? For the past um, week? I looked at a couple of other ratings, mm. um, specifically Rotten Tomato and Movie Web. Yep. And I kind of agree with them on some points yeah. um but to answer your question i did not look at any of these movies got it um i kind of looked at the synopsis um for the reviews i mean i have seen these movies right. in the past but i didn't revisit any of them um for this ranking got it did you already know like when we talked about this pretty much what your top of the list would be or did you have to dive in and figure this out well i mean speaking of you know like logan and deadpool not really being x-men movie yeah. but they kind of wrapped up in it to me they were the better of the movies yeah um you know the deadpools and the logans um a as opposed to the the x-men stuff itself got it so you knew that so i i kind of i had like i pretty much had the top of my list done the the funny thing is the ones i couldn't the ones i were undecided on were the bad movies so the only movies I watched from this were some of from the, the bottom of the list, just because I'm like, I don't know if this one is worse than that one. That's kind of what I went through this week. Well, I mean, I didn't really have my number one, number two, number five, whatever, but yeah. I definitely had the bottom of the list. I so gotcha. I had the bottom of my list. So you had the opposite of me. Yes. <laughs> um, and now, but I, I, as a whole, you know, even just going through ranking these and it just reminded me of the time when, when these were all we had. Because this is what really started this movie universe that we have now, if you remember. Absolutely. That first X-Men movie from Fox, that was the uh, year 2000. Right. We didn't have any Spider-Man yet. There was no Iron Man. There was no MCU. Mm -hmm. So it, those were kind of like, and and, the, and Kevin Feige was um, also a producer on a lot of those, a guy who you know produces the whole damn MCU. But that was kind of like the test run for this. Like, if that if that sunk, I don't think we would have saw Iron Man. That never would have seen the light of day. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have this universe that we have now. So the, it was kind of make it or break it. Um, and I remember when this was all we had. And I remember getting hyped. I was in high school at this time. Right. I remember in my, um, it was a, a computer class we took during shop. And we had access to the internet, but it's like internet was just, just starting. This is 2001, right? So we were excited, dude. We're going up on YouTube. We're watching the X Men 2 trailer. That's what we did every class. We sat there and watched it on repeat. Well, just for reference, I was not in high school. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've made college, right? College. Uh, <laughs> A little later. I, I was somewhere. He was somewhere. But not in high school. No. No. But, um, but yeah, so we, we spent a lot, but we were hyped for these movies. I remember that. And, um, so, but, but again, if, if these didn't do what they did, we wouldn't have what we have now. So I'm glad we're kind of going back, ranking these. Um, we'll start with my number 12. My number 12 is X-Men Apocalypse. I do think at, out of all these movies, that is the worst movie to me. Um, 
I hated the Isaac, um, Oscar Isaac portrayal of Apocalypse. And not, I think he's a great actor. I don't think it was anything. I think it was more the material he was given. Mm -hmm. The look that doesn't look like Apocalypse, doesn't act like, I just, there was nothing about it. Um, And I, because I remember, you know, Apocalypse from the comics, from the X-Men animated series, he was a a Thanos level of of threat, or probably even bigger at times, but he was that big, that strong. He had that presence. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. Um... Anyway, I go ahead with your rankings. Um, but that no, that's my number twelve apocalypse. I just I I of all of them, I actually probably I don't say I hate that movie, but it's pretty close to being a movie I hate. Okay. <laughs> What's your twelve? Actually, I have thirteen. Oh, okay. Um but my number thirteen was so to me they've never gotten Phoenix um um the, that that character right. Yeah. Uh, she is so awesome. And even from Famke Jen- Jensen, and you know, unfortunately, they brought in Sophie Turner. Yeah. Um. So that's not that's my number thirteen. I, and okay. you know, matter of fact, Rotten Tomato and um, Movie Web, uh, you know, we're all on the same page with Got that. Got it. That's like the most horrendous X Men movie ever. Got it. You know what? I'm gonna pull up real quick. I I had ChatGBT run a um, list, <laughs> and, and now I don't agree with all of it, and I don't remember it right now. Mm. But let me see what they had for their bottom. Now, now when you say dark, you mean that the Sophie Turner version is your number thirteen, Dark Phoenix. Yes, yes, and I agree. They, I I do agree that the um, and I always screw her name up, Famke Jensen. Yes, that her portrayal was much better than um, Sophie Turner, but I still don't think that was, it wasn't true, it wasn't the real Phoenix in, in my mind. Absolutely, I completely agree. Um, hers were was definitely better, but again, um, I mean, and they just, with the X-Men, they just have not, just like with the Fantastic Four, they have not been able to get these characters right. No. Um, and then the portrayal of these characters, um, they, they've just, just done a horrible job. So Chat GBT doesn't agree with either one of us. Chat GBT thinks X Men Origins, the Wolverine, the first Wolverine movie, is the worst. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, my number eleven was your. So I, we got to find out what movie you have that I don't have. Okay. But uh, my number eleven was Dark Phoenix. Um. So what's your twelve? My twelve is X Men's Origins. Okay. And that's the first Wolverine one. Um, correct. Yeah, and you didn't like that. I, I, I don't have. I have that one. Actually, that one's number ten for me. Okay. Um, and that was one where, you know, I mean, when we shared our comic rankings a few weeks ago, I mean, I had Wolverine up pretty high. He's one of my favorite characters of all time, mm-hmm. and that was a movie that I was, I was so hyped for because this was, I think, oh eight, oh nine when it came out. Um, oh nine, oh nine, and dude, I wanted to like it so bad. Right. Right. And there were some things. Now there are some parts of the film that I like. Even these these the worst films on here. There are parts that I do enjoy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's there's parts of all these movies, but doesn't make sense. Um, is there is there too much comedy? And I, I'm always harping on the comedy. Yeah. Stuff because some of this some of these movies they just shouldn't have the level of comedy in them that they do. Right. So definitely some parts of them. Yeah. And some of even you know the character portrayals are good. But then others are not, like the Halle Berry's, oh, um, the Sophie Turner's. I mean, things like that. Yeah, like you know, I, I watched Dark Phoenix and The Last Stand this weekend, mm-hmm. and I think the first part of Dark Phoenix is actually great mm-hmm. when they go when they go out to space because that she gets the Phoenix Force from space like Correct. she does in the comic. Yep. Um, I think that just how the the level of threat. And just the level, it, there's like this un, uneasy feeling in the beginning of the movie, and, and just the way they set up this, um, the moment for you know her to just kind of spaz out, like it, it's great. It's done very well, I believe. That you have the um, aliens that come down, they they kill those uh, family at the dinner, mm-hmm. and then um, I guess the leader kind of transforms into the the girl who went to go check on the dog, and now she's the one that's you know kind of leading um, Phoenix away. Phoenix then kills um, Jennifer Lawrence's character, Mystique. Mm-hmm. Who, which I am not a fan of her portrayal of Mystique. I like um, Romaine Stamos or whatever her name was, Jessica Romaine, much better. Absolutely. And and what pissed me off about Dark um, Phoenix was I remember the rumors at the time that Jennifer Lawrence um, wanted to leave the franchise because she didn't like putting on the makeup. And it's like, dude, you took a job to play Mystique. 
what the hell did you think you were going to have to do? And then you can tell that they catered to her because in the movie, she's in her human form for most of it. Mm -hmm. She's never in the full suit, and they kill her off after like 10 minutes. So, Tom Brady, if you don't want to play the game, <laughs> don't want to get hit, don't play the game. Exactly. You don't want to dress up in makeup, don't play Mystique. Exactly. Because, I mean, that's you, – you, you make a decision about um, a character first by what they look like, and then I guess you imagine yourself in that role or yeah. in that character – and you know, I mean, matter of fact, I don't think I've ever seen her in her human form in the comic books. No, never. So why would you not want to? Why would you want to play a character where you know you got to be smothered in makeup all most of the time? Yeah, yeah. So that that was obvious. So that I th I think once so that was kind of always standing out to me. But I I think the the premise of it was much better. That build up and then. Um, it just got off the rails real quick, and you know, and and Sophie Turner, I feel like she couldn't carry that character. She didn't embody that Phoenix character. She's too Game of Thrones. She's too laid back. Um, you know, I'm cold, so I'm just gonna sit here and warm yeah. up in this blanket. And it kind of carried over into the X Men. Her her character seems to me her portrayal was kind of lackadaisical, um, just kind of moving through the motions. I'm here, so pay me. Yeah. So um, X-Men Origins, Wolverine. So we, we got off on that tangent because I said there's some stuff we I do like about these movies. Mm -hmm. Like I love that opening scene in X-Men Origins where we get to see Wolverine and um, Victor, Sabretooth, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. him in that movie, how they just, you know, they don't age and they go through all these eras, all these different wars right. and their fight. Like that was a really cool opening montage. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I love the those two characters. It almost like they portrayed them as brothers even though they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was reading a little bit about Sabretooth, and you know Sabretooth every year shows up for wherever he is in the world. He shows up for Wolverine's birthday just to beat his ass. <laughs> and then he'll, he'll, he, he goes off. That's you know? awesome. Yeah, and they, they've had some great fights over the years. And even in that movie, there's a couple really good battles between the two of them. Um, and, but the, the worst part about that movie is the, that was the first time we've actually seen Deadpool. <laughs> Right. Or a ver if you want to call that thing Deadpool. Um, and that was the shame is that Ryan Reynolds was in the film, mm -hmm. you know, and he played um, Wade before the accident or whatnot. Right. But in the in this movie, they changed the whole deal. I mean, they sewed his freaking mouth shut. Is like, And that was one of those, like, inside jokes that you always talk about because right. Deadpool's known for, you know, the merc with the mouth. So we're right. going to give you a version. It, it's like you, you wonder sometimes, are you trying to piss the fans off? <laughs> and it's funny, I think um... – what is the 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 next Deadpool um, with Wolverine yeah. in it? He goes back in time or whatever. And then he's sitting there talking to Wolverine, and he's unloading this, you know, the clip of his gun yeah. into you know his previous version of the. Oh Weapon yeah, at X. the end of Weapon Deadpool too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep. But yeah, I just I wonder sometimes like was that your plan? Where you're like, let's see how how pissed we can get everybody with this because that was a character we never seen on screen yet, uh -huh. and Deadpool's always been a fan favorite, right? Yeah. Uh, and then they the first version they give us is this bullshit half baked like just you know frankenstein science project version of deadpool it was horrible and, and they made it a uh, that's that's with the uh the um the nuclear silo scene right yes when um you know he basically destroys the whole thing with yes. his eyes or something yeah like he that. cuts his head off now right. what's funny is um you you remember that scene deadpool also has the the laser eyes like cyclops for some reason right right and he's he's blasting them over he's got his claws up and he heats them up deadpool or weapon x He's not Deadpool. Oh, that's right. No, he's Weapon 11 because Wolverine's X, Weapon 11. X. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, I was wondering when we said Weapon X. Yeah, so Weapon 11. You're right. He's not technically Deadpool. Oh, yeah. So Weapon 11 with these Cyclops laser eyes, he's heating up Wolverine's claws, mm -hmm. which then backfires. He uses that to cut his head off. Right. And, then, yeah, you're talking about his head falls down. Right. And, and, of course, the eyes are still working, right? Uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> Um, but you know, that actually became a, I don't know if it was after that movie or prior to, but in the comics, Wolverine, some of the later comics has claws that like create energy and they, they heat up or whatnot. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if one, which was inspired by which one, but all right. So I have X-Men origins. Wolverine is my number 10. Um, did you give your third one yet? So you gave me 13, 12, um, 11, 11 was apocalypse okay um and in this one it's like i agree um apocalypse character was abysmal 
Apocalypse character was abysmal. Um, he was just like a in the movie. He seemed kind of short. Yeah. Um, he did these these apocalypse. Um, these other demigods. Yeah. They they're extremely powerful, and for him to be the original mutant, right. is, which is how they portrayed him, one of the more powerful mutant. They did a poor job of. Uh, portraying that in this movie. Also, you know, they just, again, they can't get Storm right. Yeah. Um, so I was disappointed in that. Um, so it, it, those two things kind of stood out to me in this movie. So bad. Did you like that version of Storm better than the Halle Berry one, though? I did, on, only because, at least with this version of Storm, this is when, um, so Storm, she was first portrayed as like a, a, a thief, like a pickpocket yeah. running through the streets of Cairo. Um, so she was that, so that's the younger version of storm. So that yeah. was acceptable. Yeah. So she hadn't come into her own. Um, and then apocalypse kind of showed her some stuff, you know, how she can be more than what she is, which is cool. Yeah. Um, so that was more digestible than the full adult version, Halle Berry version, because Halle Berry is really, I mean, Halle Berry storm is supposed to be almost like at a Thor level when right. it comes to, um, element manipulation. Yeah. And they just, you know, it, they, it just, they just, did a poor job of it. And she's also African. And Halle Berry is not African or from Africa. There, there's that. There's there's definitely that. But, I mean, they figured hot female, Storm yeah. is hot. So, you know. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, so, no, I agree. I, I don't think they've nailed Storm yet either. I do think this that version from the apocalypse. Now, now from the, the shittier movies, we get the better Storm. <laughs> so that kind of sucks, right? <laughs> you get the better movies, you get the shitty Storm. Right. Shittier movies, you get the better Storm. There you go. Um, but let's see Let's see where, what chat GBT is saying. Where, where is he at on this? So 12, X-Men Origins, 11, The Wolverine. So that's okay. the second Wolverine movie. And then 10, Dark Phoenix. So he, he's got one in there where, where we agree. Um, so my my next one after X-Men Origins is The Last Stand, which is the um, the other time or the first time they tried Phoenix. That was the, the Famke Jensen one and um, or Johnson. Um, and that one, I, 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 I think she portrayed the character better. Mm -hmm. I think she showed more emotion. To your point, Sophie Turner, she is very – very cold and in, in her acting like that's mm -hmm. this is and I don't think that fits the Phoenix character. The Phoenix character Absolutely. is supposed to, like, uh, I think about Elizabeth Olsen and the way she played Wanda uh -huh. in Doctor Strange when she went evil or whatnot. Yeah. To me, I'm like that's what I envisioned Phoenix as, just even maybe on a higher level, but more in that vein sure. versus what we've seen. Well, it's definitely not. It's definitely not what the um, Sophie Turner. Um, is that her name? Sophie. Yes. It's definitely not what the Sophie Turner portrayal of Phoenix was. Um, I you, in the comics, I, I see Jean Grey as um, a warm, loving, you know, outgoing person. Yeah. Almost like you know somebody that you would imagine, like from California, enjoying the sun, kind of a deal. Yeah. But she had all of these intense powers. Right. You know. But this cold, kind of stoic, just kind of kicked back, and I did didn't do it. Yeah, and and they never really explain how she got the phoenix. Well, actually, I'm sorry, they did. It was in in that version, they said that she kind of always had this power, and Professor Xavier locked it away or whatnot when he took her in a, as a youth because it was too much for her to control. And they had this side of her. They almost made it seem like she had this dual personality in that version, and in both versions. Professor Xavier did some things to Jean when she was a child to basically mind controller in a way so she couldn't access this power well gene has always been like this almost omega level um well in 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 the gene gray form she was not a really omega level but she did have some extremely powerful um psychic powers yeah. that she wasn't able to control so um xavier kind of put some locks on her yeah um so that she couldn't just go around killing everybody because she couldn't control stuff uh, or she could she could not control things while she slept things yeah. like that now um i think that is actually what attracted the phoenix force to her mm. so the phoenix force is just like okay wow i can i can work with this and he just put her over the top yeah so yes yeah, she she was powerful to begin with right uh phoenix force just took her over the top yeah um, so I, I did like this version of her a little bit better, um, but this overall story, it, it was a, 
a little bit better, but I mean, not much. It was still one of the worst X Men movies to me. Um, I mean, on the plus side, we got to see Wolverine was a, a main feature in this. I'm a big fan of Magneto in general. Um, Ian McKellen's portrayal was great. I do think, as much as I, I like Michael Fassbender's portrayal as well, but I, if I had to pick between the two, I'd go Ian McKellen. Um, I, I like them both for the eras that they they played. Yeah. Um, the younger versus the old one. Um, I, I would I would take either one of them depending on when they portray them. Yeah. You know, you, you can't mix the Ian McKellen with the younger versions of, you know, the X-Men. Yeah. And I think they, they did a great job. And, and I know we know Days of Future Past will be up high, I, I would assume, on your list as well. But um, when they had that the flashback scenes in there, like the, the actors that they chose, I think they played well off of each other trying to portray the same character, just a younger version. Right. Now, all right, what's your next one? My next one is, and, and th this is probably why you don't have a number 13, The New Mutants. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, I left that one out. That is exactly why. So the show, um, which was actually entertaining. Yeah. Um, so that's that's my number. That's my number ten. Okay. So that's your number ten. So I am on number eight now. My number eight is X Men First Class. So that's the the first of that um, you know that new series. Now I remember when I first heard they were doing that, I was not a fan because I'm like, y'all screwed up the last X Men movie. I was wanting them to go back to that and fix that. Mm -hmm. I was like, can we can we get another one that's better? Because I, I I was a fan of a lot of those characters. So at first I was like, God, why are we doing this? Right. Um, but I did enjoy it. Now it's a completely different take. A lot of the stuff that happens in this movie does not happen in the comics. I think they, um, you know, we we've always known that in some versions, um, Charles Xavier and Magneto, you know, were friends growing up or friends right. at some point. But I think this one, they, they made them even closer, you know, to the point where they were kind of running the X-Men together early on. I was never a fan of them creating, making Mystique um, Charles Xavier's childhood friend. Like, I don't think there's a comic in the world where that happens. Um, and I get everything doesn't need to be true to comic, but I was not a fan of that being forced in there. I mean, there's so many other characters they could have done that with. Well, not only was she supposed to be Xavier's friend, but also um, there was maybe a love interest with Magneto. Yes. Yep. Yep. Now that uh, that I was okay with because I think we've seen some of that in the comics, right? Where she's always been on his side as that kind of like that firsthand woman right. or whatnot. So I wasn't uh, that I was cool with, but I didn't like them making her, you know, an X Men originally because she's always been a villain the entire time in the comics. Right, and isn't she like? like very old maybe yeah. maybe not as old as like wolverine and saber tooth but she's also very old yes absolutely um so but anyway uh, on first class i did like um kevin bacon's portrayal of um god i forget his name now but the um from the, the hellfire club he he runs that but he's he this is the first time we see that magneto helmet um because he wears that to manipulate some use or enhance his powers or whatnot. So I thought he did a decent job as the villain. Do we also get to see in this movie where Xavier loses um, his legs or whatnot? He mm -hmm. becomes paralyzed. Mm -hmm. That's also a, a big change from the comics because I don't, I rem as far as I can remember, actually all the way to the first X Men, Xavier was already in a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, I don't recall ever seeing how Xavier, you know, lost his legs. But when you were saying the helmet, or you, were you talking about the Magneto character? Yes. Or the Kevin? No, the Kevin Bacon brings the Magneto helmet in for the first time. Okay, well, you know why Magneto wears the helmet, all right? To, well, from the comics I've read, it's to prevent Xavier. From, correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I wasn't a huge fan of, of a lot of the big changes. I don't, I'm not a fan of Nicholas Holt as Beast in comparison to, I think it's Kelsey Grammer who played him in X-Men Last Stand. It just it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like Beast to me. Beast was always like if you remember the X Men animated series, he was he was a genius, but he was very like poetic in the way he spoke, and we didn't get that from this version. Well, he was Beast is very he's definitely genius level, but he's also he is very poetic. Yeah, you know he reads a lot. He you know all these other kind of things. Um, a minimal character me character to me. I really didn't notice a change. Um, he just can seem he's portrayed as kind of somber, kind of you know he he's there but not really. Yeah, 
Yeah, he was there as just another one who, you know, was falling for Mystique. And it's like, for some reason, we wanted to make Jennifer Lawrence like the heartthrob of this <laughs> this whole series. Everyone's just falling for her. That's, that was, that's what she was there for. Well, because of this thing between um, Logan and Scott. Yeah. Uh, Gene was supposed to be Scott's girl. Right. You know, and Logan, you know, the bad boy. Yeah. You know, he comes in and falls in love with her and all this other kind of stuff. So that, you know, that was always that That's a good point. Thing. Yeah, so they needed their version of that in this. Well, I was, I was a bigger fan of the Logan, Scott, um, Gene love triangle than the Mystique and whoever else was involved in that one. Um, all right, so that was my number eight. So this would be your nine. What's, what's your number nine? My number nine is Deadpool 2. Okay. So. Wow. And um, it, it's, it's. I mean, we're talking about 13 movies yeah, over yeah. probably 20 years, so it's kind of hard to remember the particulars. But, um, I mean, always, you know, um, not always, but Deadpool kind of, like, stuck out to me. It was different. It was fresh. I yeah. never re really even heard of him before the first Deadpool movie. Really? Yeah. So, but surprisingly, I was, you know, good, good, uh, good movie. Got it. But I, I guess I was surprised at the the how low it was in comparison because that is um, I guess I have it a little higher on mine. Mm. Now you obviously like the first one a lot more than the second one. Yes. Um, were you were you a fan of Juggernaut being in Colossus having complete CGI characters? <sighs> no, <laughs> dude. I mean they could have done so much better on that. Um, I mean like so Avatar, right? Yeah. Not not a comic, but. The when was it? What twenty years ago or something? Whatever. I mean, Close they came out with that thing, and that thing changed how movies, you know, that kind of stuff was done. the The short of it is, they could have did so much better with, with Jogger. So you didn't like those versions? No, not yeah. at all. Not at all. Just like I didn't like the first ver uh, CGI versions of the Hulk. Oh God, yeah, those are horrible. So yeah, okay. I mean, in that case, since they're bringing old people back, just bring back Lou Ferrigno. Instead yeah. of doing such a horrible job with the CGI, just bring back Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> I love the Lou Ferrigno one. Let's let's see what Chat GBT is saying. We're on number <laughs> seven for mine, right? So we have um, Chat GBT says number eight is the first X Men movie, so that's kind of low for that one. And number seven for Chat says uh, we're we'll calling him Chad. Chad GBT over here. Chad says mm. X-Men Apocalypse is number seven. I'm surprised that's ranked so high there. Mm. Um, so my number seven is The Wolverine, the second um, Wolverine spinoff movie. Mm. I don't hate this movie as much as a lot of people. Like Chad GBT had it number 11 here, and there's a lot of lists where you'll see this kind of buried. Um, me, the, the only issue with this movie for me, the main issue, is that third act when he's fighting th some weird enhanced version of the Silver Samurai. You remember that? The thing's like massive. Yeah, and they, they falling down gantries, and um, um, he cuts off his his claws. Yes, and all yeah, like the that and it was just a disaster. I didn't like anything about that. Like, I I would have loved to see him because I, I in the comics he fights some silver samurai at mm -hmm. times, but it's not that version. It's not this massive enhanced. Like I I hate when movies feel like for the end of the movie they have to make that villain supersized. Right. Like we have to fight this large as a building type character for anyone to care about. Like right. I, I'm a fan of just the smaller one, like, you know, more grounded fights at the end. Like I love the, the, the fight at the end of um, the first Iron Man movie. It's just Tony and it's just, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Iron Monger. Yes. And they're fighting on top of, you know, Stark tower or whatnot. Like mm. it's just those two. Right. There's right. not a million people. There's not the massive battle where the, the world's about the end. They're just literally fighting over, like, the suit, <laughs> you know? And the thing about it is, is, like, a character like Logan, I mean, he has so much content, again, in the, in the comics. Yeah. They could have done so much more stuff with, I mean, even his whole Japan connection. Right. You know, with his the love of his life in Japan. I mean, how he learned how to become a sam samurai. Yeah. Um, so there's so much. You, so you're right. I mean, they didn't have to make this giant CGI thing um, to make this movie. Um, it could have been something more you know, uh, more subtle, but yeah. still been a great movie. Right. They could have used the same character, just used the actual, you know, human type version sure. or smaller version. Sure. They, you know, one character I'd love to see um, Wolverine interact or, or have fight with on screen is Omega Red. Uh, describe him. Okay. He's got, um, he's, he thinks he's from Russia, suits all red, white face. He's got one tentacle coming out of like each hand. He's known for, he's, he's in the X-Men animated series a lot. But he's he's a Russian like war weapon or whatnot. 
Um, but they've had some great battles in the comics and in the animated series. I'd love to see him on there. I'd have been okay with them even bringing Sabretooth into that movie. Yeah. Like, well, anything but what they did, I guess. Right. Um, and, yeah, I wasn't a fan of, you know, the claws. But it's like, that's one of those things. How many times do we got to see this? Right. How many times do we have to see Wolverine's indestructible claws be, you know, destructed? <laughs> <laughs> right. um, so that was my seven. What's your number eight? Well, I'm going I'm to go quickly from eight and seven, just so we're on the same one. Okay. Um, so my number eight was The Last Stand. Okay. Um, the only note I got on that was, again, you know, Halle Berry is not Storm. <laughs> uh, my number seven was of uh, the first Deadpool. Okay. Number seven, first Deadpool. Um, my number six is the first X-Men movie. Okay. Um, this one, you know, I, I think I got a special place for this one because it's, you know, the one that kicked everything off. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I, I went into this, this was, I was a sophomore in high school. So, you know, loving X-Men growing up, I, I wanted to love this movie so mm -hmm. bad. And, you know, when I remember when I first saw it, I'm like, who the hell is this dude playing Wolverine? Mm -hmm. Why is he like, just look like some regular dude? Like, and, and I, but I get that they were going for more, more grounded versions of the characters at that point mm -hmm. now they didn't have the cgi they didn't have the tech they have now like the right. cgi in a lot of these movies have not aged well right um so i get that so they they couldn't do you know we couldn't see thanos type you know like um, size characters on screen yet mm -hmm. so I, I think they did the best for what they had i i was disappointed in the fact that they chose to go all black suits like the, one of the things that I love about the X-Men comics are the how, you know, the blue and the yellow, the colorful suits that they wear. Right. Um, so I was that I, I was not a fan of. Mm -hmm. um, I loved Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier. I, I think that was one of the best castings that they've done in these movies. Right. Um, we already talked about Ian McKellen. I loved him as Magneto. And, and to your point, at that air, he's playing that older Magneto that we're used to where he's pure villain at that point. Right. I think he portrayed it well. I think... Um, uh, Rebecca Romaine, I said Jessica earlier, Rebecca Romaine played um, Mystique very well. Yep. Um, I was not a fan of Rogue. I love Rogue in the comics. But Rogue in the comics is super strong. She can fly. She's from the, the South. She's got this, like, this little attitude about her. Like, she's a little Southern Belle. Mm -hmm. Rogue in this movie was, like, scared of her own shadow. Like, she was, she basically, there in the animated series, Wolverine, um, has a similar relationship with Jubilee. Right. She joins the X-Men. She's the young teenager. She's adopted, and um, her foster parents kind of, you know, ship her off because, you know, she's a mutant or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And Wolverine becomes, like, that father-like figure for her, and they try to do that with Rogue, and I think that was a big a, a big no. That was a big miss for me. Right. I, I, I love Rogue as a character. Um, you know, that whole Southern Belle thing. Um, but her, her base powers are... Flight, I, I believe, are flight and strength. Yeah. But her real powers, and the, the reason that she wears the gloves yeah. is because if she touches you, then she'll absorb your power, your memories, and right. blah, 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 for like 60 seconds or something like yeah. that. So they are definitely a strong, um, but again, they, they aren't portraying these people to their levels. And I understand you can't have every character on a team um, have the number one spot you know, in a movie all at once. Yeah. But give them their due or just don't introduce them at all. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I do like that, you know, her power. And that's the thing. She's such an interesting character because part of her power also forces her to live in, like, isolation. Like, right. she can't touch someone. Right. Like, you know, in that um, The Last Stand, which you, what was your last movie, there's a part where um, – one of the subplots is they now have this cure. There's a mutant whose his mu his mutation, his power is he basically cure not cures, but your mutation won't work around him, right? So they, um, as the government would always do, right? They they engineer some cure <laughs> using yeah. this using this kids as a, a test um test dummy or whatnot. And Rogue wants to get the cure. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene where her and, and Logan are are talking, and she's thinking he's going to stop her from doing it. But, you know, what she says, she's like, listen, you don't, I just want to be able to touch someone. Like, right. I, I love that. That's a very intriguing, um, uh, you know, aspect to that character. But I don't like the fact how, like you said, her base power is flight and strength. And we get to see this this really odd version of her. So I was not a fan of that. Right. right. Um, so that's my X-Men number six. What you got? My number six is um, the first Wolverine. Okay. Um, and, and just like, um, and my five is actually the, the first X-Men. I love the, so 
these are the these are the movies that set the stage for a lot of the superhero movies that we see today. Yeah. So there was no real expectation. Yeah. So it was exciting to see it on screen. Um, and because you didn't have anything to compare it to, you know, it was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. So that's 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 why it's it's you know five and six, but of course then there's other things that came after that that overshadowed those. Got it. My five was when you had earlier Deadpool two. Um, and I, I didn't like it as much as the first one. My actually number four is Deadpool. So I put him right there. Um, right. and what, what, one of the things I said, I remember leaving Deadpool two with my son, my oldest. And I was like, dude, that movie felt more like it lived in the X-Men universe than any other X-Men movie to me. Wow. I got that vibe. Like it felt very X-Men animated series to me. Like nice. I, I love that. One of the things I love about the, the Deadpool movies is we get to see a lot of these, um, X Men locations, mm -hmm. you know, like the prison, the the school where he um, saves the kid from in, right. in the beginning. And I've, I haven't seen this movie in a while, so I don't remember all the names of all the locations. And again, we've said a million times, we're not experts. Right. We're comic fans, so there's right. probably some of y'all watching know this shit better than us. Right. Well, guess what? We got a podcast studio. We're doing the show, <laughs> not you. Um. So, but but I um I love to see those a lot, and even like those collars that they wear. Those are big in X Men comics yep. and X Men. So it was cool to see a lot of those things. Yeah. And it was almost like a tease, like, yo, Deadpool was a tease for a real quality X-Men movie right. to me. Right. Um, so my my four and five were Deadpool 2 and um, was five, Deadpool was four. My four was Days of Future Past. Okay. Um, it's actually my three. <laughs> okay. My, well, my three is First Class. Got it. So Now, Days of Future Past, I absolutely love that movie. Cool. I, I love it. Now, are you familiar with the comic Days of Future Past? Um, no. No. Okay. That was the early X-Men comic. So this is actually the third time um, I think we've seen Days of Future Past because you see it in the comics, in the X-Men animated series, it, the story happens in there, and then on screen. But this was also, so your number um, three, you said, was First Class, yep. right? So this was the sequel to First Class, but I, I don't know if it was because First Class didn't do as well as they thought, but I, I thought it was kind of early for them to jump to this level of movie and bring the older X-Men cast back. Mm -hmm. But I love this movie. I actually, I, I did check out a little bit of this over the weekend. The one, one thing that does kind of bother me throughout is the the Wolverine bone claws. Well, I mean, they he had him at some point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, until they grafted the um, adamantium to him. Yeah. So, I mean, he's had those all of his life. Yeah. And, and what probably a lot of people don't realize about this, this is that, you know, when his claws come out, he actually breaks his skin right. every, every time, time. Yeah. and it has to heal every time. Because when I first started seeing Wolverine, I thought he just had like a little slot, yep. you know, like a like a mouth or a nose or something like that, that they came out of. But no, he actually breaks through his skin every time. Yeah. No, I, I get it. And they look, I guess they look better in the comics. And we didn't even know this, that he had bone claws until that comic fatal attractions where magneto removes the adamantium from his bones because at, i think at that time we all thought that they were just claws that he had like you said kind of just inserted in there in some, right. in some way um but i think it was just more the way they looked on screen they just yeah it looked kind of <laughs> like like some 900 year old old man or something yes. coming out of his hand so it was, yeah. it was it was like a creepy kind of look yes. to it. And, and what 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 sucked because this was now I think this was when Hugh Jackman was at like his peak physical shape like he looked you know more like Wolverine in this movie than any of the others right. just you know he went in crazy workouts has put on a bunch of mass mm. um, had the you know the hair was down right so the fact that we didn't really get to see him with the claws and something to that that sucked for me more just <laughs> as a fan from a you know um, this visual standpoint but I, I love the back and forth between you know the older X Men. And then um, that that they were because this took place in the seventies. Mm. We get to see Quicksilver for the first time, right? Which I, I thought his portrayal was great. Um, Evan Peters, I think the kid's name is. Yeah, but I mean now he's moved on to Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's, I mean, good for him. Yeah, you know, makes him a, probably more of a serious actor. But wow, that's a difference. It is. I, I'd like to see him back. I think he portrayed that character well. Oh, I absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I like the subtleties because, you know, and there are, you know, some comics, most comics where um, Wanda and um, Pedro Quicksilver are Magneto's kids. Right. Or either kids or, or stepkids or something like that. But there's um, kids, I think. Yeah. Um, but we get to see a little tease of that when he saves him, um, when he breaks Magneto out of jail. 
Right. Because it's funny, they, they make Magneto the cause of JFK's death in this. If you remember, that's why he's locked up for right. it. Um, and, and, you know, he's in there. I think he's in the elevator with Magneto. And he's like, hey, my mom dated a guy who could control metal. <laughs> and he kind of just gives him this odd look. Um, right. And I do, I, I don't remember because you, you remember Apocalypse was the worst movie on here, in my opinion. Uh -huh. But there there are some scenes with those two in Apocalypse. And I don't remember if, if he brings up the fact that he thinks he's a dad or he just kind of alludes to it. I, I can't remember for sure, but um, I know it's mentioned in there as well. But, um, yeah, there's a few. And then and this is where, you know, I would have I would have loved to see another X Men movie after this because if you remember Wolverine basically fixes everything he you know he he goes back in time they have to stop um, Mystique's character from assassinating Bolivar Trask the guy who creates the Sentinels mm -hmm. and if you know if, if Wolverine does his job then it's supposed to fix this um you know this this dystopian future where all right. these souped up sent like those are that that was some badass scenes with those um, futuristic Sentinels that yeah. just adapted to everything right. I love seeing the Sentinels on screen because that was always a big focus in a lot of the X-Men comics. Um, mm -hmm. And we didn't see them at all in the first few movies. Right, right. But, I mean, back to uh, Magneto. That's another character, even though um, their portrayals are good. Yeah. Um, that's another underestimated in the movies character. Yeah. I mean, Magneto can literally rip the earth in part in, in half, right? You know, but they just subdue his his power yeah. so much. So it just it's it, it's disappointing, but it is. I I I think that um now there's been a handful of scenes we've seen where we get to see his power on full display. Um, and I guess that's what sucks about these movies sometimes is it's so inconsistent. Like one scene he can't do shit, then there's another scene where he's moving the damn Golden Gate Bridge, right? You know. With no with with ease, mm -hmm. I I think we get to see more of that in this first class trilogy. Mm -hmm. um, and f actually going through these, I, I just it triggered I guess I guess a memory here I, f I forgot earlier. Um, X Men First Class that movie originally was supposed to be another X Men Origins movie based on Magneto, mm. and then because of how shitty the the X Men um, the Wolverine X Men Origins movies did in the theater. They canceled it, turned it into first class, and that's why we still get some of Magneto's origin in there. You know, the mm -hmm. fact that um, he was in a concentration camp, that's where he, he found his powers and broke out. Like So that's why a lot of the movie is his origin, because that originally was supposed to be an origin story. I, I don't understand. I mean, okay, so Jean Grey, her character alone with the whole Dark Phoenix thing, um, I don't know, since these movies play out over... 10 15 years yeah which is why a lot of these actors are bowing out now um they could say set up five movies forget a trilogy yeah. set up five movies and kind of not make necessarily not necessarily make um this thing about phoenix every time but sprinkle some of that in-depth you know character development yeah. over a period of three four five movies not trying to stuff everything all in one show because it, right. it becomes confusing yeah and they end up end up diminishing uh the character's power the character's presence but the first and foremost thing is that for some of these characters they are just not getting the actors and actresses right yeah no 100 percent um so that that was my three days of future past what do you what number are you on for yours uh, my number three, Future Pass was four. Number three is First Class, and number two is United. Okay, so X two United. That's my number two as well. Okay, um, and that that I I still I rewatch that movie every every so often, and I absolutely love that movie. Um, I I love the um, I love that Magneto's kind of now he's the main villain at, in the first movie, and then we get to see Stryker for the first time, mm -hmm. so we see a lot of Wolverine's backstory. And I do, I, and, and I guess this is also part of my issue with the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie, is I don't know that I need to know Wolverine's entire origin story. I feel like part of the allure to that character is almost like that Han Solo character mm -hmm. where you don't really know everything about him, and he right. don't know everything about him. Right. And I feel like we lose that when we try to dig too deep into this origin. Like, you know, we you, you said it week one, you're tired of origin stories. But right. it's like we don't need to know everything that about the character. Actually, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember, like, how far back do I remember seeing Wolverine? It's, it's, it's almost like 
he was just there. Yeah. Um, I know he went through some wars. I know he was, you know, um, but unlike the 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 saber tooth, with saber tooth, there was actually an origin. He was a kid. Um, he actually killed his parents. Yeah. Um, I mean, just some savage stuff. He went through that, but I don't remember the same thing for for the Wolverine. He just showed up killing I people. I think his first comic, he was um in a Hulk comic fighting the Hulk, I believe. Possible. I, I think that's where we first saw him, and then I don't even know how he ended up with the X Men, but I do believe at some point he just, um, he just showed up with the X Men. To your point, he just showed up at some point. Um, so yeah, X two, but I I did like you know, and it it, it um Stryker played a really good villain. That guy, I forget the actor's name, but he I mean he was such an ass. Like his own son was a mutant, right? And he turned him into this freaking like experiment where he he used him. Um, he used him to basically, he, his son had some, some ability to kind of enter your mind and make you see things that weren't there. Mm-hmm. Like he said, he, he drove his wife to the state where she, um, took a power drill to her own head to try right. to, you know, kill the images or whatnot. So he, you know, they, they end up infl- infiltrating the X mansion, which is one of the coolest scenes in, in this. I mean, we get to see one, one of my also one of the things I also don't like about the Wolverine portrayal so far is we don't get to see a lot of that berserker rage that Wolverine has. Right. Which he is he has a lot in the comics, has a lot in the you know the animated series, and we rarely get to see it in the movies. Right. Um. And it's interesting that between um, Wolverine and Sabretooth, Wolverine has to enter and he comes out of the berserker um, rage. Yeah. Sabretooth is always in yes. the Berserker Rage. Yep. Um, so we get to see a little bit of that when they attack the mansion. And Wolverine, you know, it's funny, too, because this is PG-13, so there's no blood. Right. <laughs> but he's shoving his claws through the guy's chest into the refrigerator, pulls him out. Not a drop of blood, anyway. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but they, you know, essentially what they do is they they evacuate the mansion. And um, Stryker then steals pieces of Cerebro. And creates their own cerebro in Alkali Lake, the same facility where we we kind of know that Wolverine was. Um, that's where he received his adamantium. Right. So I, I I enjoy the plot of this movie. Um, I think it's and and we get to see early on where Xavier's using cerebro, and I think he's explaining it to Wolverine maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and he you know he can see all the mutants and all the humans. Right. They're a different color, and he explains to him that hey, if I focus on one of them too much, I could kill them or whatnot. Because mm-hmm. they're trying to find Nightcrawler. Right. Now, he's another character that was in both series of x-men mm-hmm. and i like this portrayal much better than the younger version i agree i agree but night night is also i mean think about somebody that could teleport i mean of course his limitation is places that he has not seen yeah but that's still a very powerful character absolutely so a lot of power around these guys um x-men are you know powerful they're, they're a powerful team um but i just think that there's, there's so much content they don't have to keep rehashing um, or revisiting, they can kind of just continue on and make great movies yeah. as silos. They can make individual movies that make sense by themselves um, and with a little hanger back and forth. Yeah. And if you want to find out what they're talking about, go see the previous movie. Right. I, I would argue that the X-Men have probably more, they have more characters they could build a universe around than Marvel had with the Avengers. Absolutely. They, I, I think they're a stronger team, mm-hmm. right? I think there's so much more potential there. It's almost like what they did with the MCU with the Avengers. I wish we would have saw that with X-Men. Well, the thing with the Avengers is that there's so many non-powered people involved in the Avengers right. arena, whereas the X-Men, it's like pretty much everybody has some kind of power. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this movie we get to see a pretty cool fight with Wolverine and their version of Lady Deathstrike, mm-hmm. who is in a lot of comics is one of Wolverine's major villains. Now this was a completely different take on her. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was bad, um, but it was it was a cool fight where he eventually fills her with the adamantium and her head sinks to the bottom of the tank, <laughs> um, and you know that it, and the fact that Xavier was he's kind of captured and out of the. Um, he wasn't with the team the whole time. He mm-hmm. was in this facility. You had the kid Jason, who they also had a name for him. Um, uh, and he's kind of making, he's tricking Xavier into looking for a mutant or looking for a human. Mm-hmm. 
And um, I'm sorry, first, Stryker wants to kill all the mutants. Mm. So he tricks Xavier into looking for mutants, and he's like, look harder, look harder. And we see, you know, all the mutants being affected by this. And then Magneto comes in, because I, I love Magneto. Now, he's evil as shit, mm -hmm. but he comes in like, oh, screw that. We're going to kill all the humans. Right. <laughs> so he tricks them, and now he's, he's focusing on that. Um, but I just, that's still to this day one of my favorite X-Men movies. Which kind of messes with the, the, the comic character of... Xavier because so he's being manipulated by these two people yeah. to do this stuff which is not I mean his mind in the comic book portrayal of him is too powerful for that right you know he's not just you know this this psychic person but he's also very intelligent and then to have just two people just manipulate yeah. him to do this stuff it's just well if you remember though Stryker has this um he has some type of serum and everyone that he has under his control has ah, this like yes, burn spot yes, remember that yeah there's a cool scene where he um, Magneto's in the prison, mm. and this is the movie where Magneto's locked in the plastic prison, right? And Mystique ends up putting 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 some e extra iron in one of the guards' yes. blood or something. Remember that scene? Yeah, She's at the bar with him. Yep. Yep. And this like big old fat dude. He's like, dude, you would never. First of all, you'd never be at a table with a girl like this, <laughs> right? And but he's asked so so she gets him. She mm. she spikes his drink. Gets him into the bathroom. He thinks he's getting lucky. Right. Next thing you know, he's passed out, and she injects him with the iron. Right. And dude, I, I and that, but to test me, you've talked about Magneto's power set. Like he, the minute dude walks in, he's like, "Oh shit, right? <laughs> you got a little extra iron in your blood today." Mm -hmm. That was a cool scene. Yeah. yeah. And then he's he blasts out. You know, he turns all the iron into like little bullets and shit. And then he's on his little platform. So, X two. So I guess I'm assuming we have the same number one. Logan. Logan. Yep. I love this movie. Yeah. So do I. Um, it was just. It was surreal. It was also kind of heart wrenching. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was cool to see the daughter thing. I was actually confused about that for the first because that, that's the first time I had, I had seen something like that. Okay. Oh, so you didn't know who that character was before? No. No. That's X twenty three. Laura. Yeah. X twenty three. Um. Yes. I now I heard of her at that time. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing some stuff about them. You know, and I think when when she was first introduced in the comics, I, I think what a lot of people thought was she was going to replace Wolverine. Uh -huh. Um, but I, I I didn't dig into it a lot, so I didn't know all the details. Mm. But I really enjoyed that film, like yeah. from the beginning. I mean, the, it was the first R-rated Marvel film that we saw, mm -hmm. which um, I guess that kind of helped launch Deadpool, right? Right. But it was it was great. I I mean, Hugh, Hugh Jackman's portrayal. I love that they brought Patrick Stewart's um, Professor X back, right? And dude, with, how, with a little with a little dementia, but yeah, like how crazy was that to see? Like you talk about you know heart wrenching film because this these are characters. I mean, we've seen him in. What shit? Four other X Men movies. Right. This character, we've seen Wolverine and more than that, and now we're seeing the character basically, you know, losing his mind, dying on mm -hmm. screen. Like it was, right. it, it was a great movie. Well, but the thing about it, the the theme seems to be that um, whatever your superpower is is what's killing you because, yeah. well, not well. So Professor X, you know, uh, dementia, you know, losing his mind, whatever. Um, because he was not only a very intelligent man, but he's a psychic, right? Yeah. And then Wolverine, Wolverine wasn't dying from his power. No. He was dying from the adamantium, yep. uh, which is, you know, was infused in him, which seems to be he's the only person that's affected like that. But, yeah. Um, but it was kind of confusing how he died because it was like, did he die from the tree stump or did he die from the adamantium? Right. But, so I guess it weakened him enough to where the tree stump actually. Yeah, I think, I think the adamantium weaken his healing power so i guess it'd be the combination of the two right because normally in that situation he would have just got up off the tree stump right and he would have walked funny for like two seconds now I, I do think it's funny how in the movies he heals like this mm -hmm. and that's not how his healing factor works in the comics like or in the anime like he heals fast mm -hmm. but there's been plenty of times where he's laid up for a few days something that would take you know something that would have killed someone else right may take him a few days or a week to recover from in the comics. In the movies, it's like, dude, anything that happens, it's, you know, instantaneously. Well, it makes the movie shorter. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, but also it depends on the injury. Like he get, but you also got to um, remember, this this guy's been in wars. I mean, he's been injured a lot. Yeah. So a lot of stuff, he's just used to getting shot. Right. You know, um, if he gets shot in the head, yeah, the bullet will break his skin, but it's not going to go through the adamantium yep. skull. So yeah. it just kind of pop off or whatever, you know, so different things like that. But, um, yeah, definitely the movie, did he, so did the tree stump go through his, like, complete torso, like through his chest and everything? It was just like his side or? 
I think it was I think it was close to his chest, I believe. So that means it went through his adamantium bones yeah. and his ribs and all this <laughs> other kind of stuff too. You so. know, it went right between them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's um, that's a good point, man. Maybe that's a plot hole. Maybe he's still alive. Right. right. But um, but in this movie, we get to see him go full berserker in that scene towards the end where he injects himself. Mm. Remember that I, I forget what the serum is, but the kid tells him only use this amount, and he's like, "Oh, screw that!" He uses right. the whole damn vial, and we get to see him go full Wolverine berserker rage in the forest. His daughter was pretty badass. Too. She was too when she went off. Dude, she was she, a savage, right? With the, the claws and the feet, dead devil. Yep. Oh yeah, she, I mean she's kicked a few people in hand like that. I, we get to see a lot of blood and gore with with the claws. Right. Like I like that scene where they're in the hotel and Xavier is having one of his seizures because the girl didn't give him his medication, mm -hmm. and Wolverine is he's clawing back through it, and all these guys are like frozen, mm -hmm. and he's just taking them out one by one, like claws in the head and all that shit. Like that's a that's an that's, that's an awesome scene. But that's his character. Yeah, you know that's they they should level up the other characters. Like they did in with this Wolverine movie, yeah. you know, make Magneto Magneto, you know, make Rogue who she is, make Storm mm -hmm. who she is. Scott, eh, I could not see Scott. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Cyclops either. He just seems like this guy that, you know, would would flatten your tire because you got the girl that he liked in high school. <laughs> you know, that, yes. that kind of guy. It just, I mean, his his I actually liked his brother better. You know, Havoc. Havoc, yeah. Right. I Which mean, his brother. Force. Yeah, his brother was actually cooler. Scott was just this, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, no, I think Scott was always a little bit of a dick. Yeah. And, and I, I always loved how Wolverine, they would go at it. And I think that's one of the things I liked about the X-Men, too, is they, they're not perfect, any of them. Right, right. You know, even Xavier, we talked about the stuff with Gene Gray. There's a lot of shit that Xavier's done mm -hmm. to his own, you know, students mm -hmm. that people would say would be borderline abusive. Right. You know, he's not, I, I, I like when the, even the heroes have this complexity about them where they're not just like, they're not just like a, a, a Cub Scout, you know? Right, right. I mean, it's a learning curve for everybody. You know, these, these, you know, he's bringing these kids in and, you know, they don't know, their powers, they don't know the limits of their powers. Yeah. Um, like when, when Scott Cyclops first came on and he was like, okay, so let's, you know, demonstrate your power. There's a tree over there, point at that tree, okay, open your eyes. And when he opens his eyes, I mean, everybody's like, oh, you know. Yeah. So a lot of people, a lot of kids, they don't know what their own powers are. And of course, Xavier, he's not gonna know how to deal, well, first of all, he doesn't know how to deal with these things. Yeah. You know, so it's it's like, we, we're both learning uh, you know, as we grow up, basically. Yeah, absolutely. So we had the sa same two and one. Um, so as a whole, I, I, I do have a special place in my heart for these X-Men movies. I do think that a lot of them are dated. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoy the portrayals that we've seen in the MCU of certain characters over than what we've seen in this universe. But I'll always love this for what it was. My, I think one of the things that always, I guess, intrigued me about the X-Men growing up was this whole how it's analogous to just about – any type of group that have that have been like marginalized, any type of group that have been oppressed, right? Right. You know, a lot of what um, Stan Lee based this on, because I mean, it was written in what the '70s, was a, was about you know Malcolm X, um, right. Martin Luther King, all of the the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. because you know, obviously lots our of, country, lots of politicking, lots lots of politicking. You know, our country was screwed up. Well. Still is, right. <laughs> but this ain't that podcast. But we looked at, you know, he looked at these mutants the same way that we've seen, uh, unfortunately, a lot of black people treated in the United States. Mm -hmm. And he used these stories to kind of just bring people together. Like I, I saw a clip of Stanley talking um, recently um, where he, he had a little pin that he was wearing and the pin was a mix of black and white. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked him about it. He goes, oh, this pin is something I wear to help bring people together. That, you know, regardless of your color, everyone should just be kind to each other. It's kind of what, what Stan Lee stood for. And you saw that in these comics. Right. Right. Um, last thing, you, um, you, you shot over a note earlier this week. And you intriguing question. You said, well, let's discuss the most powerful characters from either Marvel or DC. No. 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 The most powerful character across Marvel and DC. Yes, the who's ever number one in our minds. Right, not not just who's the most powerful in Marvel yeah, versus yeah. DC, but regardless. I got gotcha. you. Okay, I have mine. Okay. Um, I'll go first. Go ahead. I, I'm not even gonna say what I. I'll, I'll just go first. Phoenix, Dark Phoenix. Phoenix. Yes. Now I want to throw out a qualifier. Yeah. Because. 
um, we're talking about made up characters, not versions or re- renditions of. Right. So we're not talking about God. Yeah. Because um, like in DC and Marvel, there is the one above or the presence. Yep. These, these are gods, right? Right. Then you got Lucifer and Michael. Yeah. Right. Then you got their father. Um, you got God's daughter. Um, and then, I mean, I think Marvel even has Santa Claus as, <laughs> as, as, as a character, which he has some awesome powers. Yeah. If you think about it. So I want to exclude those. Okay. All right. So anyway, go ahead. Uh, you got, um, Phoenix. I got Phoenix. Is number uh, one. Dark Phoenix. Yep. Dark Phoenix. I got Franklin Richards. I don't even know who that is. Franklin Richards is the son of Mr. Fantastic and Sue Storm. Okay. He is, he was, he was, when he was, um, before he was even born, he was leeching Sue Storm's power away from her. Yeah. So Mr. Fantastic, uh, Ben Grimm, The Thing, and Johnny Storm, they had to go into um, the negative zone to get um, this device, I forget what it's called, in order to and bring it back so it could stop the embryo Franklin Richards from killing his mother. Yeah. Right? So when he was born, he um, he started. He was he was able to. I, I want to get get into his old backstory, but he was able to create pocket universes as a as a child. Okay. Um, fr- uh, his father had to put locks. Speaking of like like Dark Phoenix, like yeah. pr- Professor X did with Gene, his father, um, Mister Fantastic, had to put locks on his mind to keep him from just doing like weird stuff. Yeah. Um, but at some point. Um, it gets to a point where in the future, uh, Reed Richards is going to die. So the future Franklin, uh, storm comes back, Frank Richards come back and he takes the locks off of the younger version of him and then teaches him every day how to use his powers. This is a, an above mega level, um, character. Yeah. As a matter of fact, some people have said that it wouldn't even make sense to try to portray him in the MCU really? because you couldn't display all of his powers. Yeah. I mean, he resurrected Galactus and made Galactus his herald. Mm. Um, he killed like all, killed off the Eternals with, with Galactus. I mean, this dude is just completely off the charts. Yeah. So, I mean, he could create, like I said, he created a, a, a pocket universe and yeah. then he started creating galaxies within those universes. As a matter of fact, you know, uh, he was portrayed as um, early on as a mutant, but he wasn't. He thought that he was a mutant, so he changed his, in the, just in the background, just yeah. like a kid in the background, he changed his physiology to be seen as a mutant, but he's not actually a mutant. That was explained later on, all right? Um, so this, 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 this kid is like, he just... He just he's just out there. Yeah. Um when was he, he introduced? Oh I was reading about him when I was in high school. Really? Yeah. So he's been around. Wow. Matter of fact, some people will say that the reason that in Mar the Marvel, like Spider Man, you know, thirty years later he's still a teenager. Yeah. Is because Franklin Richards is in the background just subconsciously <laughs> keeping everybody young. Yeah. You know, he's that level of dude, wow. man. Oh shit. Um, and I, I guess there's something with this Richards family then because Kang the Conqueror, there is a variant of Kang, which it, I believe um, is an ancestor of Reed Richards. Mm-hmm. So it, it, there's something about something about that Richards bloodline then if, if this guy's that powerful. I mean, oh, Kang yeah. is up there. Um, wow, I never even heard of that dude. But, yeah. I mean, from what you're saying, sounds like it. Um, yeah. I And I, I went to Phoenix just, you know, I was trying to think of, you know, most power. And to me, th- that's the only entity I've seen that, now, maybe it was an unfair choice because Phoenix is not really a character. It's a a, um, a power that another character, you know, obtains, I guess. Um, you know. It, no, that's, that's fair because you also have, like, other entities like the Watcher. You have Spectre. True. You have you have Death. You have, um, yeah. there's a family with, uh, what is it, um, Death, um, um, the the Sandman, the, yeah. you know, uh, you know, all so all of that stuff it can be put in there. It's just that I don't want to go. I don't want rent. I, I, I don't want. I think it's unfair to throw in things like gods and yeah, angels yeah. and things like that 
because those are someone else's interpretation of, and they shouldn't be aligned with made up comic book characters. Right, right. I got you. But yeah, I I went Phoenix just because of just that. Le- I mean, the the Phoenix Force itself. One of the powers it gives Gene is resurrection. Like you, it can't be killed. Mm-hmm. It's been and there's also there's other comics where there's a comic where Cyclops he obtains the Phoenix power and now he's this like godlike level. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just it's such a unique power set and it's so it's so uncertain too, right? Because it it not only do you get the power, but it also kind of controls that individual. It changes them to an extent. Right. It's like a couple of others, um, like uh, Doctor Fate. Yeah. Um, the Spectre, yeah. uh, Moon Knight. Yeah. These, these are spirits that inhabit a host. Matter of fact, they can't operate um, on their own. Right. They have to be part of something else. Yeah. Uh, but Thor, there was a rendition of Thor having um, the Phoenix Force as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. yeah. Um, now, th- we both picked Marvel characters. Mm-hmm. What would be? Who would you think would be this, the uh, most powerful in DC? DC, I would go with um, the Living Tribunal. Um, the Living Tribunal. Okay. He, he's he's three. He's 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 at the top, right underneath um, Michael and Lucifer, and the one I, I I think it's the one above all in in DC or the Presence. One of the, in yeah, other yeah. words, the God character. Got it. I was I would throw Superman up there, but I guess he. Where where, where would you say his power set in in, um, in regards to the people you just mentioned? Um, Superman would be superman has i mean and there's different versions of him yeah um there's a version of him with thor's hammer and captain america's shield yeah so that and there's also superman 1000 where you know everybody's died lois is gone you know his his parents are gone on earth um so he goes and he makes a new forces of solitude inside the sun yeah and he lives there for ten thousand years so he comes out and he's this ultra, 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 you know, Superman. So there's different renditions of that. The Superman that we're aware of, um, and again, that if you look at the latest one, like after he was resurrected, yeah, he's even more powerful. Right, right. Um, but his power is just that he's physical. Most of, uh, all of his power is physical. Yeah, you know, the eyes, the the, the strength, moving planets. I get all that. But when you get into creating things out of nothing, mm-hmm. um, you know, altering universes, creating beings, yeah. um, you know, being able to grow to the size of a galaxy, which is something like the Spectre can do, those are different levels of power to me. Yeah. Um, I would say out of the physical characters in DC, Superman would be that person. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. And I, I, you know, I thought of a lot of different characters going through this. Like, I was even thinking Thanos with the stones, though. Not yeah. not just base Thanos, but right. Thanos with the stones is up there, mm-hmm. right? Um, Galactus. Be- because, because if you if you do Thanos without the stones, then you got a you got Dark Side too, right? Um, you know, which is kind of his equ- equivalent. Yeah. Yep. Galactus. I mean, he can basically yep. eat whole planets, right? Right. So there's there's a lot of a lot of characters at that level. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and it, and it's kind of, I mean, is that too much though? I mean, yeah. is it too many of these people? And they just keep making these just over, like Thor was created because Hulk was the, on the Marvel side, the strongest um, character yeah. in, in, in those comic books. So Thor was re- imagined because it was thought that the only being that could defeat a Hulk is a God. Right. So even though he's hardly ever portrayed as being able to beat the Hulk. Yeah. You know, he was created to beat that kind of a character, but never actually did. Yeah. No, all their fights are, they're usually pretty even. They usually (laughs) try to, it's like, maybe it's like the rock and Vin Diesel where by the contract, they they each have to get an equal amount of punches when they're on the screen. (laughs) So no one could look like they lost them. Maybe that's what Hulk and Thor have going to. Well, that was our list. But before we wrap, let's let's see what ChatGBT said for their top few. Um, so ChatGBT said five was X Men First Class, four was Deadpool, three was X Two, two was Days of Future Past, 
and one was Logan. So we all three of us nice. agree Logan was number one. Nice. So if you guys, we interested to see what you guys think. If you have, um, drop your list in the comments. Uh, I'd love to see some of your guys' standpoint on, you know, or your, your feedback on this. But as a whole, again, I love the X-Men movies. Um, next week, we'll be talking X-Men or Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The movie drops June 2nd. We appreciate you guys joining us today. Adrian, thanks for coming in. As always, always. But I would, since you brought up Chad GBT, I yeah. would be interested to see what Chad GBT says, who was the strongest character in comics. Oh, is. you know what? Let's do, let's do this real time. Let's see. Strongest or most powerful? Um, the most powerful. All right. Suspense is building. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, it's saying, determining the most powerful comic book character is subjective. However, blah, 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 here are a few characters that are often considered being among the most powerful. Let's start with number five. Number five, Superman Prime 1 million. Yep. This, the, this yep. is the one you're talking about? That's, that's the one I was talking about, yep. This version of Superman exists in the 853rd century. He's absorbed an enormous amount of solar energy over time, making him nearly omnipotent and virtually invincible. The Beyonder is number four. Um, the one above it all is number three in Marvel Comics, Supreme Being and the Embodiment of the Marvel Universe. Now, these are those godlike characters that you were saying leave Correct. out of it. Got Correct. It. They, they, the equivalent of God, yeah. Okay. Um, the Living Tribunal, this is what you said was your number one, right? Correct. Cosmic Being in the Marvel Universe is responsible for maintaining balance and order in the multiverse. It possesses immeasurable power and can alter reality, manipulate time, and enforce judgment on cosmic entities. Number one was the Spectra. You also mentioned this one. Yeah. Got it. And then um, I had another list. I, I had them break down. Powerful Marvel. Where is it? All right. This was a more in-depth list. They said, I haven't separated them. So for Marvel, five was the Phoenix Force. Four was Thanos with the Gauntlet. Three was Galactus. Two was the Beyonder. I think you mentioned that. Number one was Living Tribunal. Uh, DC Comics, the Anti Monitor was number five. Yep. Never heard of Dark Side number four. Mm. Three, the Presence. Two, the Spectra. One, just regular Superman. Mm. So a lot of similarities. Wow. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I was surprised um, by that. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't have put Superman as number one, and I wouldn't have put Dark Side as um, what was it number four or number? Yeah, five? he's number four. I, I was surprised by Dark Side at number four. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, to the person who said that Flash was um, more powerful than Batman and Superman combined, even ChatGBT doesn't agree with you because they put Superman above <laughs> number one. Um, but anyways, this was fun. I guess ChatGBT is a new guest on our show here. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Um, but hey, dude, thanks for coming in. This was fun as always. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ne next week we'll be back. We'll be talking Spider-Man and all things, and I'll be interested to see uh, how this movie is going to pan out. I guess – Let's do something fun. Let's predict what our rating is going to be of the show of the movie. Okay. Um, out, of t out of one out of ten, where do you think you're going to rate this movie? I would say a strong eight, possibly eight point nine. Yeah. I would say. Da, da, da. I, I, you know, if I'm going off of how I felt about the first movie, I'm going to say probably a nine. But just off of these trail, I'm going to say a nine. Okay. I'll go with a nine. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to speak some positivity in this movie. <laughs> it's not going to let us down. There's not going to be too many right. Spider-Mans. It's not going to be too, too funny. There's going to be some real stakes. There's going to be some emotion behind it, I hope. So right. we'll see. Right. All right. Well, we'll see you next week here on Only Comics. All right. See you guys.